To fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word. From a throne of endless glory, to a cradle in the dirt.
God is good all the time. time. Well, it looks like you have that memorized. On this Trinity Sunday, we're so glad to have you here, both those in the nave and those of you who are online, welcome. Those of you who are here, if you are a guest, we invite you to take the visitor card that's in the pocket uh, in front of you in the pew and fill that out, give us some information, or scan the QR code that's at the bottom, and uh, in that place you can add some information or ask us a question. The link will be online for those of you who are new um, and you're online. Just place I'm new in the comment section, and that will also um, enable us to contact you, answer any questions that you might have. Christ be with me. Christ within me. Christ behind me. Christ before me. Christ beside me. Christ to win me. Christ to comfort and restore me. Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. This prayer is attributed to St. Patrick. It's a protection prayer. May it be in our hearts today. May we carry it with us this week. Welcome. As you are able, please kneel for a moment of silent prayer. Rise. Oh, my 
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. and everlasting God, you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us to at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries out, To you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago, I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields, 
or the world's first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters might not transgress his command. <clears throat> when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 8, found in your bulletin. from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord.
According to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take things, take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. For some of you, I want to introduce to you a publication of the church. For some of you, you may not already know it. The book is called Lesser Feasts and Fasts. This is the 2018 edition. It has all of the feast days and all of the fast days. Advent, Lent, all the calendar of the year. Each day, mostly, there are a description of a saint whose saint day is assigned for the day. For example, Absalom Jones is February the 13th. And on one side is a narrative of Absalom Jones's life. And the other side is the collect, the prayer for the day, and scripture readings. And this book has all sorts of saints. Catherine of Siena, St. Peter, St. Mary, Julian of Norwich, and all sorts of other saints, modern-day saints, like the martyrs of Memphis or Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. These are also put into the calendar. Now, Sunday is a day of Easter, and so we don't use this book on Sundays because every Sunday is a little Easter. So we use these during the week in the daily office, on Wednesday morning, at our Holy Eucharist. But it's a wonderful resource, and I introduced you this to you for a couple of reasons. One is so that you know this exists. So if you want one, you can pick it up. Lesser Feasts and Fasts. 
The other thing is that most parishes are named after a saint, right? St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Timothy, St. Titus, St. Mary, the parish I was in before, St. Anne. And so on their paternal or mater maternal feast day, they would remember that saint as one who would in some way inform that congregation of what it means to live in the vision of that particular saint. So a parish named after St. Paul would look at the life and ministry of Paul and say, what do we learn about being a church and living the faith as we study and see the life and ministry of St. Paul? And they use that as a template to describe what it means to be a parish. Helps define and articulate what that means. St. Anne, the parish I was in, Anne was the grandmother of Jesus. And so we, we studied what does it mean to have birthed and raised Mary? What does it mean to have had Jesus as a grandson? What does it mean to be a spiritual mother or father in the work of God? And who are we? Trinity. It is much more difficult for us to look and say, this is how the saint, because we're, we're looking at a sacred and total mystery. Because we're not named after the doctrine of the Trinity. We're named after the reality of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and what that relationship is. And how they are together. So as I come to Trinity, usually I ask a visiting person to preach. In my early days, I tried to preach sermons that taught what the Trinity was. It's a real mistake. How do you explain, define the very essence of God? How does this infinite mind, the, the infinite of reality of God translate into the finite mind of a mortal? It doesn't. But it does cause us to stop and say, what does it mean for us to be Trinity Episcopal Church? What does it mean to identify ourselves within the loving and caring relationship and purpose of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. When I came here almost 15 years ago, one of the first things I did was call together cottage meetings. And I had two or three cottage meetings the six weeks of Lent. So I could get to know you, and you could get to know me a little bit. We could have a conversation. And I started every meeting with two questions. One, what brought you to Trinity Episcopal Church? And the answers were myriad and, 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 and important to hear. And some of them touching and, and, and inspiring. The second question was, why do you stay here? And again, the answer was manifold, many facets, from practical to deep faith answers. And I think about that and I wonder, and I ask myself, why did God call me here? And why have I stayed I think this is this is an important question for us, whether we're here or online. To become more aware of our relationship with this body of Christ, with this part of this church. This part of the church called Trinity. This part of the church that's Episcopal. It's part of the church that meets here. We explore what that means. We examine our own faith. 
In what ways has my faith been touched, molded, formed, increased as I have become a part of this community of faith? The Gospel of John, the passage that we have this morning, doesn't really help us too much when it comes to Trinity. There's a reference there that kind of alludes to this. But what John does in this passage is talk about the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of truth. Jesus says to those disciples on the eve of His arrest, There are many things that I want to teach you, but you're not ready to hear them. You're not ready to bear them. Well, I will ask and the Holy Spirit will be sent to you to enter into you to teach you the truth. This Holy Spirit called the Spirit of Truth. Now, this is much more than doctrine or facts. For in John, truth is Jesus Christ. For John, when he speaks of truth, he speaks of Jesus, where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. So for the spirit to teach us all truth is to continue to have us learn and grow and understand what it means to be the body of Christ in this place. To be in Christ and Christ be in us as Christ is in God and God is in Christ. The sacred mystery of unity between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the gift of that Spirit, in the presence of Jesus, we are folded into that deep, significant holy and loving relationship of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We begin to participate in the sacred mystery of God and how many of us live our life as though we are not in that sacred mystery. Or how many of us have lived not being aware that God is loving on us and caring for us and trying to teach us what truth What Jesus truly is in our life and in our world. So I spent the week reflecting on what does it mean to be Trinity Episcopal Church? What does it mean to be this congregation named Trinity? Because there are others out there. Trinity is one of the most popular names in the Episcopal Anglican Communion. But what does it mean for us, Trinity Episcopal Church in the woodlands? And as I reflected on that, I've reflected on what I heard in those cottage meetings some 15 years ago. I've reflected on my conversations with people over the last two, two and a half years And I wrote down some of the things that I remember. And I would submit to you that these are the truths that the Holy Spirit has given to us as this particular body of Christ. That nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God And the love for each other. Not politics. Not pandemic. Nothing of differences of color. Of race. Of education. Of income. Of status. That we are a people united one to another. The living and the dead. That we are united in a way that nothing can cause us to be separated. And in the last two and a half years or so, I've seen our unity be resilient. Resilient at a time when we could be at odds with each other in opinions about things. 
when we were separated physically from each other, only online. But we did not let that break our unity. We did not let that break our identity as members of this body of Christ in this place. And that we value unity, not uniformity, not where we all believe the same thing or hold on to the same things or act the same way. That we do not want to create cookie cutter Christians, but that each of us is a unique soul walking our own particular place in the faith. And some of us are ahead and some of us are behind, but each of us are traveling our journey of faith together. That nothing separates us from the love of God and the love for each other. We have experienced that over the last two years. And we are an Easter people. We are a people who believe that in death, in grief, in loss, in darkness, the Easter message of new life, of resurrected life, that no matter what comes, death or life, loss or gain, fear or courage, We believe there is a third day. And as many of us has been, have been walking through our own personal holy week of death, of betrayal, of denial, of loss, of fear, of darkness, we have continued to live the faith knowing that there is an Easter morning for us. And that we will not live forever in our own spiritual Holy Week. But we will come out a resurrected people. A people who see new life and new purpose and new ministries and new ways of understanding who we are in this place. We are a people who love the sacraments. I talked to individuals who just a little over a year ago, we had communion for the first time in a year and a half or so. And people told me how much they forgot the importance of it until they received it in their hand. People who talked about being moved emotionally and spiritually as they took the sacrament for the first time in a year and a half. That the value, the significance, the power of word and sacrament was renewed in us as a community of faith. And we celebrate baptisms differently. We celebrate Eucharist differently, not in terms of how we do it, but in how we see it, how we encounter it, how we receive it. It helps define us in a new way, in a renewed way. And our compassion as a community of faith did not waver. In the worst of times, we continue to reach out and care for those in need. Continue to do ministries to the homeless and the hungry. Those who are all lost or those who are afraid. We may not have been able to do it to the extent we did before. We may not have been able to do it in the way we did before, but we continued to care for those in need. Our compassion and love for others did not wane. Because we live within the power of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Who in perfect love. They're united in purpose. United in identity. United in making us one within their heart, within their love, 
within their compassion. So Trinity Episcopal Church. What does it mean to live and reflect the Holy Trinity in our lives? What does it mean to be the body of Christ in this place at this time? In the prayers of the people, we pray for each other. We pray for the world. And we pray that we may be faithful to the ministries Christ has entrusted to us. That these are not our ministries. They are Christ's. And He has given them to us and says to us, I trust you with this mission, with this ministry, with this purpose. So Sunday after Sunday, we have been faithful Day in and day out throughout the week, we have been faithful. And as we enter into the summer, let us reflect and think deeply about what it means for us to be the body of Christ. To say, we are Trinity, Episcopal Church. And the Holy Trinity, one God, undivided, defines something about who we are and who we are meant to be in the world. So on this day, let us glory in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us glory in the fact that we are united We are united to the Father, the Creator of all the world. We are united to the Father through the Son, Jesus Christ. We are united to the Father through the Son in the gift of the Holy Spirit. One God. And with them. Forever and ever. Amen. Now, turning to page 358, let us now stand and confess our common faith by saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds with the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the prayers of the people, we'll use Form 3. Found in your bulletin or on page 387 in your Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. For the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of South America. For the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Christ Church Tyler, St. Clair's Tyler. 
St. Cyprian's Lufkin. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of, your, of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Archbishop Justin, for our presiding Bishop Michael, for our bishops Andrew, Jeff, Kay, and Hector, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We also pray for our seminarian Elisa Stebbing and her family. For me, the ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to, uh, give to the departed eternal rest. That light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for the needs of others, praying together for those on our parish prayer list. Donna Hall. At this time, we invite intercessions and thanksgivings, either silently, out loud, or in the comments. Pray for peace throughout the world, particularly in the Ukraine and Russia. Pray for those serving in the armed forces and their families. Pray for the victims of natural and man-made disasters and for our first responders. Pray for our parish and her faithfulness to the mission and ministries Christ has entrusted to us. Pray for the children of the world who suffer. Pray for those who are alone and have no one to pray for them. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please rise. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. may be seated. Again, welcome to our service this morning. Know that by your baptism, you're welcome to receive communion with us. There are some instructions in the bulletin uh, just before communion that if you're unfamiliar. Also, we're willing to help you if you're uncertain about that. Um, 
there is, along with that visitor card I talked to you about, is a Bless My Offering card. Many of you uh, give online or give through text or some other electronic means. So if you take this card and put it in the offering plate, that becomes the symbol of your uh, financial support of the mission and ministries of the parish. It also has a QR code, so if you want to do uh, giving by text, that's available also. Also, out in the narthex, we did these a few years ago. Um, it's daily offering for Trinity, Trinity Episcopal Church. It has the Lord's Prayer and then a prayer collect for Trinity. They're out there, and I invite you to pick one up as a part of our congregation, as a part of this uh, service, and uh, take it home with you. And you can use it in your daily prayers as a way of, of remembering the community, the body of Christ Trinity, in your prayers um, whenever you want to use the card. Um, also, those of you who are in line, if you ask for one, we will be sure to send you an electronic copy of this. A few announcements I, I want to make is um, one, Mad Camp, Music, Art, Dance, and Drama, in that order. All at the same time. All at the same time. You are a miracle worker. Um, they will, that camp is about to start, and so wanted to let you know that there will be a performance of all of the, the children who are involved in MAD camp um, Friday, July the 1st at 6 p.m. So please mark that on your calendar to come and support the music ministry and the children who are involved in the MAD camp and um, have a nice, enjoyable time of entertainment and just sheer delight tnt that's teens in training rising fourth fifth sixth and seventh graders are invited uh, to join on wednesday june the 22nd to volunteer at the south county community center serving meals to the seniors that are there from 11 a.m to 1 p.m and then once that's been done they will all come back to the church and follow up with some games in butler hall um, end with a communion at 3.30. Please talk to Father Frank. That's Father Frank right there. Um, and he will find some humorous way of telling you about it. <laughs> Maybe he'll do a little dance and drama. But... <laughs> Sunday brunch. Usually we have second Sunday brunch. But this year, uh, because of Pentecost and our potluck, uh, our second Sunday brunch is going to be the third Sunday. June the 19th, Holy Smokers will be serving breakfast before the 10 o'clock service and then hamburgers and hot dogs after the 10 o'clock service and on our Father's Day in Butler Hall. Please mark that on your calendar. We do love a good potluck. That's one of the other things about us, isn't it? One of our strengths. We like potlucks. Are there um, any birthdays or anniversaries this week for blessing? If you have a birthday anniversary and you're here, come on down to the front. If you're online, please place your anniversary or uh, birthday in the comment section of the feed and so that we can uh, give thanks to you and celebrate that anniversary or birthday. So who's the shy person here who does have a birthday or anniversary and just isn't quite ready to come? Just raise your hand a little bit. Okay, let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, in your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, happy anniversary, both here and online. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of heaven. Yes. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Receive, O Lord, these gifts presented by your people for the work of your church. Amen. Great Thanksgiving is found on page 361 of the Book of Common Prayer. Page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself, 
And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. The bread which we break, Alleluia, is the 
the communion of the body of Christ. The, the disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread.
together in the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Almighty God, in union with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. As Jesus Christ has taught us, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. Since we cannot receive the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, we beseech you, O God, to bind us together through your Spirit. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, that we may become one body and one Spirit. May we live in you and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the holy undivided Trinity guard you, save you, and bring you to that heavenly city where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.